Cam Hayward got paid. Couldn't have been more obvious all along that he would. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to elaborate on why that is. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also cover two other teams in town in the Penguins and Pirates, of course. Hope you'll check those out as well. Cam and Omar Khan signed a contract yesterday afternoon on the South Side. It was the three-year extension that everyone expected and that Cam wanted. It was for $45 million. There's all kinds of little T's that are crossed and I's that get dotted in there, but that's the amount that it'll end up paying him. Nice little bonus in there for the Steelers in that they actually create $9 million in immediate cap space. So if Omar wants to, you know, do that thing that everybody wants him to do, he's still free to do it. And Cam gets himself a term that's comparable to those of some of the better interior defensive linemen in the NFL. He sets all kinds of standards for a player who's 35, a defensive player, I should say, who's 35. And what's left now? Oh, right. Cam's next contrived exercise. Listen, I can do this because I do this to his face, so I can definitely do it on this show. I can have fun at his expense. And when he tries to get everybody all riled up about something, something, how he might be playing for Cleveland or whatever that nonsense was, believe me, he gets the friendly blowback from this direction. Because there can't be anything more absurd than the idea of Cam playing for another team. So why would he suggest it? Because Cam likes to constantly find fresh ways to motivate himself. He's not above that. He might not even believe what he's saying in the second that he is saying it, but he'll seize upon it if it'll help him perform to his peak. So, you ready for the next one? The next one is this. Nobody thinks I'm worth it. Nobody thinks I'm worth that deal that was just signed. They all think I'm too old. They think I'm too banged up. That I'll never properly recover from the groin surgery that I had this offseason. I'll never again look like that player in the season opener a couple of years ago in Cincinnati when I was pretty much destroying the Bengals and Joe Burrow all by myself. They'll think I'm done. They'll think Keanu Benton, this kid, is going to have to carry the line. They'll think they have to keep three of us on the field instead of just two down linemen. So it's going to be constantly me and Keanu and Larry Ogunjobi when it really only just needs to be two of us. They're going to want to swap people in and out to make sure that I'm fresh or that I'm not getting hurt. None of this might actually be true. It doesn't matter. If you think I'm exaggerating here, I dare say you don't know this individual. So what does this actually mean? What will actually result from it? Well, look, let's keep this real. He does need to be healthy. He needs to be all the way healthy. He doesn't need to be as explosive as he was, you know, 10 years ago. He doesn't even necessarily need to be the first one to the backfield. He needs to use his brains. He needs to use his brawn. He needs to stop the run. But yeah, every once in a while, he also needs to be that guy who's just flinging carcasses in all directions. And they're carcasses, by the way, because of everything that he would have done before that flinging were to commence. He does need to stay on the field. And to do that, I'm not saying this because I'm suggesting anything remotely negative, because this is true of everyone when they get into their mid-30s and start working their way upward. Whether it's a Ben Roethlisberger, whether it's a Sidney Crosby, you have to change the way you prepare. You have to change the way you train. It almost has to be a preventive form of preparing to play in football games. You're exercising and stretching, not necessarily harder than you've done before, but in a different way. He's got to do all of that. He's got to stay on the field. I'll say it again. And look, He doesn't have to be Superman within the context of the overall defense either. You've heard me saying on this show for weeks now, all I want to see from that D-line is the basics. 
Stop the run. Don't have the inside linebackers doing that. Don't have Minka Fitzpatrick doing that. Get off your blocks and create some pressure of your own, mostly to make sure that offenses stay honest against T.J. Watt. They'll get back there, meaning T.J., meaning Alex Highsmith, meaning Nick Herbig. They'll get back there. They'll put pressure on that'll allow Minka to freelance in the backfield. But only if the D-line as a whole gets the job done. Cam needs to stay on the field. Have I mentioned that? He needs to stay on the field and get his job done. That's it. If he does that for three years, then this was one heck of a contract signed by both parties yesterday. And believe you me, nobody, nobody anywhere wants that to happen more than 97 himself. When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. Today's J1Q comes from Derek, who says, Hey, DK, I can't help but to reflect on the past couple of years and how many times the offense has failed to possess the football, especially in the first half of a lot of those games, and wonder how much this minimized the playmaking ability of the defense. The defense had to be getting tired physically, tired mentally, being on the field too often. With new offensive pieces in place this year, I'm hopeful that if this offense can possess the ball more effectively and actually score some points early in games, this defense and all of its playmakers, T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, Patrick Queen, Alex Highsmith, Mika Fitzpatrick, can get back to creating consistent pressure, turnovers, big plays all around. I'm excited about this possibility. How about you? Well, Derek, the way you phrased this has me excited. I'm not going to lie. You really went all out with this one. And I don't think it was the way that I read it, because in my head, you were even more enthused than the way I was speaking it. I I, I couldn't agree more with you on all levels. You know, the first, I'm not going to look it up, but it was like the first two or three games of last season, the defensive snap counts were obscene. And you knew there was going to be a price to pay, whether that was going to be in the form of fatigue or far worse injuries and sure enough the defense did start to crumble in both categories my belief to latch on to one slice of what you just shared there is that for this football team as a whole to be a real life contender not just kind of floating around not just keeping their heads above water but a real life contender There's going to need to be a storyline and a general storyline that emerges about this defense that it's either like a bunch of savages ready to eat your quarterback alive, or it's a group that's going to be really efficient at creating takeaways of all kinds, not just Minka in the backfield with interceptions. They're going to be able to knock the ball loose. They're going to be able to pounce on that ball. They're going to be able to return that ball. They're going to be able to do things that make a defense truly special. In fact, if I carry this further, I'm not sure there's a path for the Steelers to be a contender without having this kind of defense. So yeah, obviously, the less they're out there, the fresher they're going to be, the more dynamic they're going to be. But then that brings us back. Back to talking about the other side of the ball again and whether or not the Steelers are going to be able to A, put up points, B, sustain an offensive pace in putting up points. You know, not that every drive needs to be 18 plays, 90 yards, or whatever, but you want to be able to do that. You want to have it, if not necessarily as a priority. Just as a possibility, something that kind of scares the other sideline. Totally with you on this. Totally. I appreciate the question. 
I appreciate the energy. You can tell we're getting a little bit closer to game day, and I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow as we get that much closer to Atlanta. 